Honey, I'm home. <laughs> Mr. Smith, ten minutes later than usual. Car troubles, I presume. Who are you? Does not matter yet. Take a seat. Who are you again? That doesn't matter. What does pertain to us is what I'm about to tell you. As I've told your wife, you're the closest able descendants of the Johnson family, a Puritan family that lived in early colonial America. We've discovered two members of this Puritan family who were frozen in a giant vat of potato salad. What are you talking about? Who are you? Like, where do you come from? Like, why are you in my house? We at the Central Intelligence Agency have uh, determined that it would be in our best interests to have them housed with your family. Honey, you, you can't be serious. You can't believe what he's saying, right? Believe it or not, that's what's going on. Whether you choose to accept this, you're not to tell anyone, or else... And what will happen if we don't agree to accept them? Well, then you're going to Nebraska. That's a CIA <laughs> joke. You won't actually go to Nebraska. But you will end up missing out on the benefits. Benefits? Yes, you'll be receiving $10,000 a month as payment to keep the Johnsons healthy. I think we should do it. I, I mean, it's definitely cheaper than raising your kid. And if we don't talk about religion or, like, sexism, it should be good. I don't know. Letting strangers stay inside of our house, what happens if they ruin our garden? That's $10,000 a month, okay? We need this money. We'll do it. When do we start? I expected you to say that, which is why we've already brought the Johnsons. They're upstairs, and if they ask, we've swapped out your clothes for theirs. But remember, any one of you tells the truth about the Johnsons. I hope you all have a great day. I can't believe what's happening right now. Me neither. Who should go see them first? What should we tell them? Should we both go in first? What was that? I don't know. You go check it out. Or should I check it out? You're the firewoman. everyone's calmed down. Mrs. Mr. Johnson, I'm your ancestor. We have been tasked to take care of you for the current period and house you. It is a pleasure to meet you, Sonny. It's, yeah. it's just, it's just yeah. positively swell. It's pretty uh -huh. damn, this house, it's, it's pretty darn fancy, you know. So what do you do for a living? Uh, I'm a gynecologist. A gynecologist? Uh, what is that? It's a, well, you know, if you don't know, you know, whatever. It's, it's getting late at night. Uh, I think we should all head to bed. Um, okay, where are you guys planning to sleep? Oh, I'll, we'll just sleep on the floor. Your bed is a degenerate abomination to the Lord. Okay, good night then. Good night. I'm just going to get another floor in this. What the? Did you do to our bed? <laughs> now that we're all living together, I feel under the same roof, I feel that we should all know a little bit about each other. I was born on the spring of 1612. It was a cold day, and ever since then, I've been a pro to be in this during the month of April. Not that I was born in April, no sense, but I. Uh, I was too I mean, I'm gonna go outside. I'll let you talk to Mr. Johnson. Wait, wait, can't I come with you? I'm 
have a screw, but like I get the cold and I don't do it. Fucking leave, Sonny. You know how they are, women. Always having their talking and such. That's what they're really good for, you know. Talking, whatnot. I, th that's all really they're good at, except for cooking, cleaning, and, and birthing babies. <laughs> Oh yes, where was I? So anyway, it was a cold winter day that day. Even though it was actually in the spring. But anyway, I wasn't born in another way. But I was very itchy. And my mother, she made beans with uh, tomatoes in the town. What is this greenery? Oh, it's called grass, sweetie. How do you keep it so short? Oh, we, put, we pay someone to come mow it every week. Okay, but how is it so green? Oh, those are called sprinklers. It's not it's not the best lawn in the neighborhood, but it's still pretty good. What do you use a lawn for? A lawn is just there. It really doesn't have any purpose. Well, do you have any other crops? I mean, it's September. We need to start harvesting. What do you mean you don't plant anything? Isn't this your lawn? We just pay the mortgage. Anyways, I have to go to work. Try not to leave the house. Wait, you have a job? Yes. Woman. Yes, and I'm a firefighter. You fight fires like a soldier? Sure I do. Well, I have to go now. Well, you see, I was really good friends with this man. He was a lawyer and a reverend. One by the name of John Winthrop. He was a very good man. He was what convinced me to go to your new world. Um, or what you call America. Oh, hi, honey. How is the top? It's really short compared to how your women things normally are. Women, am I right? Mr. Johnson, I do not care. No language on earth can describe how much I do not care. A quantum supercomputer computing for a thousand years cannot describe how much I do not care about what type of beans or anything. I've memorized, a year, I've memorized years of your life and I'm never getting those brain cells back. They're gone. I could have solved cancer, but I can't now because of you. Oh yeah, what type of beans are you like? I know that. When you were four. I like the brown ones. Yes, and the yellow ones tasted funny. Ugh. So, you're heading to work? Yeah. Are you? No, I called in because we have an HOA meeting. The Reverend next door really wanted us to go. Can I come? Hello, and welcome to History Time with Jack. I'm your host, Jack. So, who are these Puritans we've been seeing so much of, like Mr. and Mrs. Smith? Well, the Puritans are a religious group hailing from England from the 17 and 1600s. They were persecuted by the current rulers of the time, for the most part, of not following the traditional Anglican and uh, Church of England views. So, they bought out, built, and funded ships in uh, Holland, hopped on a board, and sailed across the sea, hoping to land in Virginia, but unfortunately landing a bit off course and ending up in Plymouth. Plymouth, Massachusetts became the staging point for many important future events in U.S. history, such as the Mayflower Compact's creation being almost an early blueprint leading to our modern constitution. So, once these Puritans landed there, what did they do? Well, they spread from Massachusetts to Vermont, New Hampshire, and Maine, becoming a pretty consolidated group within New England. Some of the standout traits of these Puritans were things like modest dress. Don't laugh. Don't laugh. Um, major... Uh, agricultural festivals for harvests, and a very strong um, belief in family life uh, and education as well. Many of the early colleges of the United States were actually founded by the Puritans as well. They were very, they found education and governance very important to them. But gradually and slowly throughout the end of the 1700s and early 1800s through the Great Awakenings, 
less and less Puritans were in the United States until they eventually fizzled out entirely. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed History Time with Jack. My fellow Americans, I stand before you all to announce the creation of our new church service, which shall be held right here this Monday. All are welcome to join. And it's also gonna be Mac and Cheese Monday, oh boy. Which is first come, first serve, amen. Praise be to the Lord, amen. And yes. whatever these Macs of cheese are. Oh yeah. I can see we have a new member in the crowd. Who wants to sing the Happy Happy Neighbor song? <laughs> happy Happy Neighbor, we all look at you. Well, if nobody joins in, can we at least get a cheer? Everyone, listen up. I, I have an announcement to make. Nestor B. Randall is a hole-digging, boil-sucking cake stealer. He is a neglectful degenerate who has committed crimes worthy of death. His dog went poo on my lawn, my beautiful lawn. And even worse, he didn't pick it up. He stared right at me as his dog went poop on my lawn and then he walked away. That's right, I saw the dog squat down and excrete physical waste upon my lawn. And it was a big poop, it was this big. It was disgusting. So I'm calling you out, Nestor. You have a small lawn. It's the size of my front door. Except way smaller. Look at the size of my lawn. It's big, just grass and dirt. That's right, baby. No weeds, no dandelions. Your dog pooped on my lawn, so guess what, Nestor? I pooped on yours. <laughs> yeah, except for I went higher. I pooped on your porch. How do you like that, George Bush? I pooped on his lawn, you idiot. That's right, and I want all of you out of the meeting room, or I'll poop on your lawn, too. What is that? I think uh, it's called corn. I know it's corn, but why is it on my lawn, and not you know, grass? Oh no. What is it? My wife. She's gonna kill you. This is bad. Oh no. Those are beauty pageant award-winning flowers. And even worse, the judges are coming today. Oh, this what is do you bad. think? <laughs> I wear that parasitic thing you call grass, and I have purified it with the holy flame, and I planted something you can harvest. Corn! Corn? Oh, God. This is, this is bad. All right, you, we both need to go inside. I, I maybe take my wife out to dinner. Maybe she won't be as angry then. Angry about what? Oh, oh nothing, really. What happened to my lawn? What happened to my precious flowers? You. I'm going to kill you. The woman has an axe! Run! 20 men to take her down. 20 men! Specially trained military forces, all of them. I wanted to call in the snipers. They wouldn't let me. They said it would get too messy. So we had to deal with it the old-fashioned way. If this happens again... I thought I threatened you well enough, but apparently not. I'm sorry for my outburst earlier. It was just a really stressful day at work. It's all fine now. I can assure you that we are all good. You all better be. Otherwise, you know the drill. Okay, everybody. Now, today, we're going to be watching some Veggie Tales. Yeah, get on it. Okay. Now, you would all just wait for a second while I put in the VHS. We'll be right there. If you like to talk to 
tomatoes. If a squash can make you smile, if you like to waltz with potatoes, up and down the produce aisle. <clears throat> Excuse me. Have we got a show for you? Okay, everybody. That was a really good episode. <laughs> Who else enjoyed that airbrush? Because I know I did. Now, but enough of that. What did you think of today's episode's morals? Come off here, the Johnsons. Let's hear it, okay? <clears throat> it is the nature of man to sin. Wait, I need to scroll down. It is the natural inclination of man, as descendants of Adam and Eve, to sin. All humans, every man, woman, and child, yes. is condemned to fiery punishment from birth. Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen. <sighs> he died on the cross for our sins so that they be forgiven. We, as God-loving Christians, shall not be tempted by the lying tongue of Satan who wishes to tempt us with riches like your mac and cheese and your talking vegetables. We must not deviate from the word of God and say a constant reminder of him. Otherwise, we risk eternal punishment in the fires of hell. You all must repent or suffer eternal damnation, suffering from his almighty wrath. Amen. This is the kids section, ages 10 and younger. I thought you guys were going to volunteer, which is why I called you two up. This behavior isn't acceptable. If you don't like my mac and cheese, just say so, in private. I'm still trying out new recipes, so don't be too critical. I'm going to have to ask you all to leave. And it's not just because of my mac and cheese, but because you're also scaring the kids. Well, yes. No, I'm supposed to say that. No! Yes. Okay, Mr. Johnson, let's get you out of here and quit commenting no, on no, my no, mac and cheese. No, 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 no. I can't believe you all assaulted the reverend. That's not funny. Do you know how much it costs me to pay your bail? You're just lucky the reverend didn't press charges. What he was saying was blasphemy against the Lord, not to mention I'm pretty sure vegetables cannot talk. They don't. It was just a television show. Like you would know. Out. What? Get out. What? Why? Why? You ask me why I'm kicking you out? Yes. You've caused nothing but trouble here. You're, you're sexist. You have damaged multiple pieces of our property without paying us back or even apologizing. You're putting stress on my marriage that's already stressed enough, okay? We do not need you guys here. No amount of money is worth keeping you here, okay? So, out. You two should probably get a marriage counselor. I've had good things about them. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> Ow. Okay, fine. Honey, we have to let them stay here. What are you talking about? That's not going to even happen. They've caused more than $10,000 a month just this meeting to our house of damage, okay? Come on, they're your family. Spare me, Wonder Woman. You're the only doing this to prove I was wrong. At least I'm nice to people. Yeah, whatever. Wait, pretend to be nice? You literally tried to kill them with an axe. I wanted to kill all three of you, actually, but that doesn't matter. Check out the contents of this envelope. The check inside isn't written to 10000 a month. It's supposed to be 100000 Holy moly, we need to get the back right now. Hey, folks. So, your lawn, it is superb. And... It has a very rustic feel. You guys won the lawn contest. I can't believe we won. At least the Johnsons did something nice for us for once. Yeah, plus we're getting paid a lot. We should probably go get them back. Probably. Mr. <laughs> Mrs. Johnson! Johnson! Mrs. Johnson! We're in the con! 
Why were you in the corn? I'm not leaving this corn. I planted it with my bare hands. You could come back inside, but we're willing to take you back. No hard feelings. Good, because we really like your toilet.